So we've all been there, stuck in an awkward situation, not really sure what to do about it. Yeah, it happens to some of us more than others. Fortunately for us, etiquette expert Amy Symington is here to help us through some of those common situations that can get awkward very, very <laughs> quickly. Amy, thank you so much for stopping in. Sure, as long as I can help you. <laughs> yes, we appreciate it very much. Okay, here's our first, well, there's lots of awkward situations. Okay, I'm yes. just going to throw some out to you. Okay. The first one, what do you do when you're talking to someone and he or she invades your space, you know, here she is a close talker. Right. Yeah. Depending on that? people's cultural heritage or if they're hard of hearing or they just don't get that personal space that we'd be like to have. Um, you can do what I call sort of the little shuffle dance where you, you step, take a step back and take a step back and you hope that they get that cue. Sometimes they just don't and you have to resort to, you know, walking across the room to get something or talk to somebody or even putting a barrier in between you like a table or something. Hopefully they get that that bit of space distance okay. between you. So just shuffle so, back. Shuffle. Yeah. A little shuffle dance right. backwards. Uh -huh. Amy, I am admittle, admittedly a hugger in a world of handshakers uh -huh. and I know it makes people very uncomfortable. How do you deal with someone like me, who goes in for the hug and you're trying to handshake or they're handshaking and you're hugging? It can. It can be very awkward, especially in business, and you don't know what the other person's going to do, especially if you kind of know them pretty well. What I would do, and this has happened to me, is I just go straight for that very sincere but warm handshake and I'm the first one so it's very obvious that we're going to shake hands. But let's say I miss that or you miss that cue and you go in for the, for the hug. Just accept it. Have a little hug. Hug me anyway. Just, just move me on. Anyway. It'll be okay. <laughs> it's going to be fine. Yeah. That is so awkward, though, when you think that you're shaking hands, but one of you is half hugging, and then you do the awkward it hugging, can be hard. And handshake, and yeah. you don't know what's happening. That's why I just go straight. Like, if I, if I just go straight for a good handshake right away. Okay. So that's clear. Yeah, you eat okay. clear. Five feet out. Like, start going Right. Back. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm going in for the hug. I <laughs> warn you. I, hu I hug everybody, too. It's probably weird, I know. But, um, okay, here's another scenario. I don't know that this is a situation. Allison thinks it's a situation. Our producer, is it rude to stand in one line? You have a family member stand in another line to see which line is faster. I say, go for it. That's what I say. And Who I, cares? And I will admit, I've, I've done that. <laughs> I've done that before. Okay, what's the big deal? Is that a thing? It's not really a thing. It's not in Emily Post. It's not in any of the etiquette books that I have ever read. It's not a thing. But it is rude. I mean, it's, it's not nice. You can really irritate some other shoppers. And care. so... It's care. one of those things, that, it's not very nice, you really shouldn't do it, but yeah, you know, I've been known to do it before. All right. Okay, also, is it rude when someone asks you, what are you doing Saturday? You really don't have plans, but you're not really trying to make plans? But I think yeah. that where it can be awkward is if somebody says, what are you doing Saturday? And you think they're about to invite you to a really cool party, and then you say nothing, and they go, will you help me move for eight hours? <laughs> right. Move my grand piano? Then you're stuck because you've already said, I'm not doing anything. Exactly. You end up watching their kids all day long. If you say, yes, yes I'm free all day. Mm -hmm. um, I would maybe say instead something like, well, let me check, but what do you have in mind? Ah. What would you like? You know, what are you thinking? And then if they say, I want you to watch my kids all day, you can be like, very oh, busy. You know what? I just checked my. I'm so sorry. I've got that I'm thing busy. happening. Sorry, yes, yeah, so that thing point. that's been on my count all day. What time day. do you need me? Seven. Oh, the uh, thing is at darn. seven. Yes, exactly. I always say that too. I say, I'm not sure yet. Why do you ask? That's yes. what, and that yes. seems yeah. to work. Yeah. What do you have in mind? Yeah. Okay. Right. right. Okay. That's okay. good. Okay. Oh, okay. What about? Um, and this happens because uh, I live with an elderly person, mm -hmm. and I know all of her stories. What do you do? Do you just shut? I've heard it before. Oh, Thanks, Mom. I know, and my grandfather, God love him, you know, he tells me the same stories over and over and over again. You don't want to be rude and say, I've heard that enough right. already. But you could jump in and say something like, I remember you told me that story. Oh, I love that. was really funny. I can't believe that happened to you. And you can let them know in a nice way. That you've heard the story before, make a comment about it, and hopefully you all can move on. I, I always think with elderly people, you just let them tell it again. Yeah. That's, that's what I think. I but. amuse myself by asking inappropriate questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can make it a game. You can do that too. Okay, what about the one I was talking about at the top of the show? You are at a party, and somebody mm -hmm. is just talking your ear off about things that you maybe you're not really that interested in. It's time to be done with the conversation. I always try to do what you said what you do with the close talker, which is to physically move back. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people don't get those cues. Do you have advice for how to deal with those? 
those situations. Definitely. You can say something, you know, in a break in a conversation, you can say something like, it has been so great talking to you. Um, I, I see Sarah across the room. I need to talk to her about something. Or, um, I'm so thirsty. Can I get you something to drink? And you can walk away and get something. I guess you have to come back and <laughs> give it to the person. <laughs> but then you have to, you can move on a little bit. So it's changing the topic. It's, all right, here's a really bad thing you can do, but it works. If you really can't get away and you see someone else walking by, you can say, hey, Joe, have I, have you ever met Susan? <laughs> you can introduce the two of them. That's what I do. And then you walk away. <laughs> It's so rude. That's, that is not the best way to handle it, but it works. It works. That's I think my idea with time cues, hard wrap, you're out of time. I think that I likes to try it at your next cocktail party. Uh, you can find Amy and get information about her etiquette workshops for adults and kids at finesseworldwide.com. Finesseworldwide.com. Amy, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, still ahead on Charlotte today. Fill up your weekend calendar with some great events happening around the center city this month. But first, we'll head to the Food Lion Kitchen today, where the author of the popular Saving Dinner Cookbook series joins us with her recipe for chicken piccata.